Welcome to this webinar presentation for Tecmar's Designer Series Thermostats. My name is Elizabeth Brown. I am a Technical Support Specialist at Tecmar Controls and I will be your host for this presentation. The Designer Series Thermostats are Tecmar's highest quality line of thermostats with touchscreen technology and innovative design features. The line is comprehensive to accommodate all of your heating and cooling needs and we'll look at how they compare and contrast in this webinar presentation. What they do have in common is that the Tecmar Annette thermostats 552, 553, and 557 all offer superior flexible control with a simple and convenient user interface. The 553 is the newest member of the Designer Series thermostat line. It is a communicating touchscreen thermostat designed to operate two heating stages, one cooling stage, with options for fan and relative humidity. The heating stages can be hydronic, forced air, or single stage heat pump. The cooling stage is either air conditioner or heat pump. There are two auxiliary sensor inputs for flexible temperature control, and it features a built-in relative humidity sensor for humidity control options. This thermostat will replace the 543, 544, and 545 thermostats with increased functionality options. So how do these three thermostats compare? Well, this chart will outline the designer thermostat comparison based on features. As you can see, the 552 is a single stage heat thermostat. Let's jump over to the 557, which can control two stages of heat, two stages of cool, and up to two stages of heat pump. All of that with humidity control and with fan operation. Now the 553 can control up to two stages of heat, one stage of cooling, and one heat pump stage, with options for humidity and fan operation as well. But what's different about the 553 is that it can't do all of those things at the same time. So as we've heard said before, the 553 is like the Swiss Army knife of thermostats. So it can be a knife and it can be a fork, but it can't be both at the same time. So we're going to look at another chart which will make it easier to see which applications each of these thermostat is designed for. And what we recommend is to choose a thermostat based on the application and not on the feature set. This chart allows us to choose a designer series thermostat based on the application. That way you are certain to select the right one. The chart is separated into conventional heat cool equipment, ducted heat pump system, and hydronic heat pump system. Starting at the top with the conventional heat cool equipment, you can see that if you have a single stage heat application, the 552 is the designer series thermostat for you. Once we move into heat cool applications, we'll be looking at either the 553 or the 557. A one heat, one cool, with fan and relative humidity control would be an application for the 553, as would a two heat with one fan and humidification control. If you have a two heat, one cool, and one fan application, that is also suited for the 553. As soon as you move into two stages of cooling, as in that last application where we have two heat, two cool, with fan and relative humidity control, then you're looking at the 557. Moving on to the ducted heat pump system, both the 553 and the 557 can operate and control an air source heat pump. If you have a radiant floor with one stage of heat pump and with relative humidity control, you'll be looking at the 553. If you switch out the relative humidity control for a backup heat so that you have one radiant floor, one heat pump, and backup heat, that again is suited for the 553. And if you're using a fan instead of backup heat or relative humidity so that you have one radiant floor, one heat pump, and one fan, that is also for the 553. When you move into two heat pump stages, you immediately have to go to the 557. So the last application there with one radiant floor, two heat pump, with backup heat and relative humidity is an application for the 557. Lastly, looking at hydronic heat pump systems, if you're doing a radiant floor with a fan coil for heat and cool with relative humidity control, you need to go with the 557. The 557 is the only thermostat that can do heat cool operation with the fan coil. 
This presentation will answer your questions on how the three designer series thermostats are similar and how they are each unique, so that you can determine which one is best suited for your application. We'll start by taking a look at the equipment compatibility for each of these designer series thermostats. We'll follow that up with the features that are shared by all, and then the features that are shared only between the 553 and the 557. Afterwards, we'll narrow our focus more on the 553, since this is the newest thermostat in the designer series. We'll introduce its applications, its features, and then take a look at how simple it is to wire. If you want more information on the 557, there are two product-specific webinars available for viewing on our website at www.techmarkcontrols.com. The 552 can control one stage of heat, and that stage of heat could be a radiant floor, a fan coil, or a convector. The 553 can operate a lot of different pieces of equipment. We can control one stage of fan and humidity control, up to two stages of heat control, and those heat terminals can be a radiant floor, fan coil, convector, furnace, or backup heat. And we can also operate a heat pump or an air conditioner. Now keep in mind the 553 cannot control all of these pieces of equipment at the same time. It is a highly configurable thermostat. These are options only. And we'll take a look at how these relays can be configured for each of these pieces of equipment later on in the presentation. The 557 equipment compatibility chart is very similar to the 553 chart, except that now we're moving into two stages of heat pump or AC control. What's different about the 557 though is that we can control a lot of these pieces of equipment at the same time. And that's just because we don't have to share relays the same way that we do in the 553. There are three separate terminal strips on the 557, so there's a lot more options there. What sets the designer series thermostats apart from the rest? That's what we're going to start looking at in this presentation. We're going to be looking at the features that all the designer thermostats share. So they all support radiant floor heating and radiant floor cooling. They all allow for Tecmar net communication. They all have the away scene key and scheduling ability that can be optimized with the optimum start feature. They're all touchscreen thermostats, and they all offer a dual temperature display for added convenience. Starting with the radiant floor heating and cooling, all designer series thermostats have a floor cool setting, where you can turn floor cooling on for applications with a house control 406 that is operating a hydronic heat pump system. However, floor cooling operations should include at least one 553 or 557, and that is to provide the relative humidity measurement to the 406 house control to allow it to do dew point reset for safe radiant floor cooling. If doing hydronic cooling beyond floor cooling, you will need to use the 557 for sure. It is the only designer series thermostat that can do hydronic cooling in addition to floor cooling operation. All of the designer series thermostats feature two or four wire TechMarnet communication. And of course, the TechMarnet communication will allow for zone synchronization and indoor temperature feedback. It also allows you to connect a gateway 483 if you're looking to do some remote system access, or connect a gateway 482 if you want to integrate the thermostat into a home automation system. Of course, all of these designer series thermostats can also be connected in a standalone operation. The designer series thermostats feature a dual temperature display. So the upper right hand corner will display the outdoor temperature or the floor temperature. And if you have a 553 or a 557, you can also display the heat cool set points and the relative humidity measurement. So it's up to you. It makes it very convenient for a homeowner to be able to look at the thermostat and at a glance see what the outdoor temperature is or see what the relative humidity is in the space.
You can quickly turn down the temperatures on all of your network thermostats with the touchscreen away scene key. So this makes it very convenient for the user. If you have a network of thermostats in your home, by touching the going away button on one of these thermostats, as long as it's a designer series thermostat, it will trigger all of your network thermostats to operate at the away temperatures as programmed in each one of those thermostats. You can select a permanent away setting, or you can program your away setting to be for a specific number of days ranging from 1 to 180. So it really gives you that flexibility to operate your home the way you need to. So if it's a vacation property, you could put it in a permanent away status, and you could even remotely access that thermostat if you have a gateway 483 when you know you're going to be returning to that vacation property and warm it up before you get home by canceling the away status. All designer series thermostats have scheduling ability, so you can customize a schedule based on your lifestyle. You can program four separate events. So in this image we see someone in the morning and they're drinking their cup of coffee before they leave for work and you can see the temperature in the home is quite comfortable. And then when they leave to go to work, their schedule reduces that temperature so that we can save energy when no one's home. When you return from work, the house has been warmed up to its occupied temperature. And you can reduce that temperature if you like a cooler room when you're going to sleep at night. So four separate events. Now in these designer series thermostats, you can have four events but only with two temperatures. So your unoccupied period of the day and your sleeping time of the day would be at the same reduced temperature as well as both of your occupied times of the day. Now all of these designer series thermostats also offer optimum start. An optimum start will learn the response time of the room to fine tune the scheduled start times. So what that does is it will learn the heat up and the cool down rates of the room and it will start heating or cooling before the scheduled time so that the room is at the appropriate temperature when you want it to be. And this would be in advance of event one and in event three. So for in advance of event one, if you're sleeping um, and you want the house to be warm when you wake up at 6 a.m., these designer series thermostats might start the heating system at 5.30 so that it has that half hour to warm up so it's right at temperature when you get out of bed. The same is true for when you return from work. If it takes 45 minutes for that room to heat up to the occupied temperature, Optimum Start will learn that and will start the heating system at that time before the scheduled event so that when you come home for work, the house is warm waiting for you. The 553 and the 557 share a lot of common features. They are both designed to operate integrated air and hydronic systems. The next few slides will explore these common features. So both of these thermostats have the ability to measure relative humidity. And we can use that relative humidity measurement for floor cooling. These thermostats both feature radiant floor warm weather shutdown. And they have the same heat staging and cool staging operations. And since both of these, these thermostats can control a heat pump, we have the balance point setting and the balance point schedule setting. And we'll look at all of these over the next few slides. Now keep in mind the 557 is a higher level thermostat and it does have greater capability. So if you have a two-stage heat pump or air conditioner or you intend to do hydronic cooling, not just floor cooling, but other hydronic cooling, with a water-to-water -water or air-to-water heat pump, you need to use the 557. So the 553 and the 557 both feature a built-in humidity sensor. And we can control the relative humidity in the room by operating humidification and or dehumidification equipment based on the settings that you input into the thermostat for the maximum and minimum humidity levels. Now one thing you should note is that you can connect an auxiliary humidity and temperature sensor 086 to the 557 
but you cannot connect that auxiliary humidity sensor to the 553. So if you tend to do maybe humidity averaging, where you want to use that external humidity sensor in another room and average out that relative humidity, then you need to go with the 557, because the 553 only has its built-in humidity sensor. The nice thing about relative humidity, as we saw earlier on, is that you can program the thermostat so it displays right on the default home view. We showed earlier how all designer series thermostats have the floor cool feature that can be turned on or off, but the 553 and the 557 are necessary to provide that dew point reset. So they'll provide that humidity measurement to the 406 and the 406 in turn will use that relative humidity measurement to calculate the dew point temperature and make sure we are above that temperature for safe radiant floor cooling because what we don't want is condensation on the floor. So using that relative humidity measurement from the 553 or the 557, we completely avoid any possibility of condensation on the floors. Radiant floor warm weather shutdown is truly a celebrated feature that sets Tecmar apart from the rest. So what this is doing for you is that it will prevent you from overheating your space during the shoulder seasons. So in the spring and fall when the mornings are quite cool but the afternoons get a lot of heat, especially a room like we've shown on the screen here with all that window space. So a nice sunny afternoon in the spring and fall has the potential to really heat up that space. What we don't want is to have our radiant floors turn on in the morning and then continue to heat the room into the afternoon when the sun is doing that for us that will lead to a room that is likely too hot for our personal comfort. So radiant floor warm weather shutdown is a setting that will hold off the radiant floors until we reach a certain temperature where we know that it's unlikely to heat up significantly in the afternoons. If you're using a heat pump, this makes even more sense because it's during those shoulder seasons that we can get a lot of efficiency out of our heat pump. So instead of charging up our radiant floors, why don't we get the most we can out of our ducted heat pump system, get that maximum efficiency during the cooler weather and use that to heat the space when needed. On the 553, this feature will only show up if you're doing two-stage heating with the second stage of heat being from a heat pump, a fan coil, or a furnace. The heat staging operation is the same for both the 553 and the 557. Of course, if we are warmer than the warm weather shutdown temperature, we're not going to do any heating. As soon as we drop below that warm weather shutdown temperature, then we can bring on our heat pump and of course it would be one stage of heat pump with the 553 up to two stages with the 557. As the temperature continues to drop and it drops below the radiant floor warm weather shutdown temperature then we can bring on our radiant floor as first stage heat and if necessary the heat pump could provide a second stage of heat. The temperature continues to drop outside and we drop below the W2 lockout. Now the W2 lockout is a nice setting, these thermostats feature, so that we can prevent that backup heat from turning on unnecessarily. We're only going to allow it to come on when the temperatures are cool enough to warrant its operation. So when we drop below that W2 lockout temperature, we can use our radiant as first stage heat, a heat pump can provide a second stage heat with the 553. If you're using a 557 and you have a two stage heat pump, then you can get a third stage of heat here. And then we have our last stage of heat from that backup. If the outdoor temperature continues to drop and we drop below the balance point, and we'll talk more about this balance point setting in a minute. Um, Basically what the balance point setting does is it prevents the inefficient operation of the heat pump. So if we drop below that temperature, we're not going to allow the heat pump to come on because it won't be giving us any efficiency advantage. And in that case, we can use our radiant floor as first stage heat and our backup as second stage heat. 
The cool staging operation is also the same for both the 553 and the 557. If we are cooler than our cooling cold weather shutdown, we're not going to allow any sources of cooling to operate. As soon as we get above that cooling cold weather shutdown, then we can operate our cooling equipment. So for the 553, this could be from a single stage heat pump or a single stage air conditioner. And the 557, it could be a two stage heat pump or air conditioner. Now one thing I want to stress here is that we have to be above the warm weather shutdown setting to allow floor cooling to come on. So I know this has caught some people in the past. Why isn't my floor cooling coming on? And the answer has been, well, you were not above the warm weather shutdown. So we do have to be above this warm weather shutdown setting to turn on that floor cooling operation. So at this temperature and above this temperature, we can use our heat pump or air conditioner and our floor cooling. Now the balance point is what will prevent the inefficient operation of the heat pump. Because heat pumps are, their efficiency is very much related to outdoor temperature. You can see when we have very mild outdoor temperatures, we get maximum heat pump capacity. And as the outdoor temperature drops, so does the capacity of the heat pump. And at a certain point, the capacity of the heat pump is going to equal the building heat loss. And it's at that point that we call the balance point that we do not get any added efficiency out of our heat pump. So it really makes no sense to operate the heat pump if the temperature drops below that balance point temperature. So what the 553 and the 557 will do is after that point, so if we are colder than that balance point temperature, we will only bring on the radiant and the backup heat. We will not bring on that heat pump. The 553 and the 557 both give you the option to schedule your balance point. Now what this means is that if you're in an area where your utility company offers discounted rates during off-peak time, so usually at night, then there is an incentive for you to use electricity at those times of the day. So you could use your heat pump during those off-peak times, and then when they increase the rates during the day, it might be cheaper for you at that point to use a fossil fuel source of heat instead. So the 553 and the 557 give you that option to customize your system based on the incentives that are offered in your area. These are the applications that the 553 was designed for. As I've said before, the 553 should be chosen based on application. Don't choose it based on features because the 553 is a, is a different thermostat in that it offers so much flexibility so that you can configure your system in so many different ways, but it can't do everything at the same time. So you need to be clear um, on the relays and how they can be configured for the application you have in mind. Before we get into the applications for the 553, I want to show you how those relays can be configured. Now the accessory relay, right here, can be configured to control a second stage of heat, a humidifier, a dehumidifier, a fan, or an HRV. So that one relay can control five different pieces of equipment. So maximum flexibility, but it can't do everything at the same time. The Y relay can be set to operate a heat pump, an air conditioner or a humidifier. And then we have the G slash O relay. Now this is a bit different. This relay can operate a fan or it can operate the reversing valve for a heat pump. So I want to be clear at how flexible these relays are, how they can be configured for a lot of different things. And this is why you cannot choose a thermostat based on features, because we can operate so many different things, but not all at the same time. The first application for the 553 is showing the thermostat operating a one-stage furnace for heating, and that's being controlled through the W relay, and a one-stage air conditioner for cooling controlled through the Y relay.
We're also operating a fan through the G relay, and the fan will operate with the heating and cooling or independently for ventilation. The thermostat here is operating a humidifier. We could also operate a dehumidifier using the accessory relay. And because we can operate either a humidifier or dehumidifier, the title will specify that it is relative humidity control. And that can come from either humidification or dehumidification. Note this is a standalone application for the 553. It is not connected to a house control or a wiring center because it's a strictly forced air application. The second application for the 553 is showing a two heat, one fan, and humidification application. So we have our first stage of heat with the radiant floor. Our second stage of heat is being provided from the fan coil. You can see we have fan control with the G. And the Y relay, in this case, is operating the humidifier. Now, in this case, we do not have the option for dehumidification. And that's because the Y relay cannot be configured to operate a dehumidifier, only a humidifier. So that's why we're clear up here, humidification. When it can be either humidification or dehumidification, we'll write at the top relative humidity. But in this case, it's only humidification. Now again, the fan here would operate for heating, or it could operate independently for ventilation. We have an optional coil sensor shown here, and that is to set a fan coil minimum temperature, which will allow the fan coil to warm up prior to turning on the fan, so we avoid blowing cold air. The third application for the 553 shows this thermostat operating a radiant floor as first stage heat and a furnace as the second stage of heat. And we're also controlling an air conditioner for cooling. So our first stage of heat is with the W relay operating the radiant floor. Our second stage of heat with the accessory relay operating the furnace. We have G for the fan. And then our Y relay has been configured to be an air conditioner for cooling. So the fan will operate for heating, for the furnace heating, and for cooling or independently for ventilation. Now we'll look at another two heat, one cool, one fan application on the following slide with different heat terminals. So in this application, we have Again, our first stage of heat with the radiant floor, controlled with that W relay. Second stage heat in this case is the fan coil, and you can see that accessory relay is being used to operate the second stage of heat. We have the Y relay operating the air conditioner. And again, we have the G for the fan operation. So the fan will operate whenever the fan coil is being used for heating or when the air conditioner is being used for cooling or it can operate independently for ventilation. Our fifth application is also our first heat pump application. You can see we have a first stage of heat with the radiant floor controlled with the W relay. We're using the Y relay to operate a heat pump, and that heat pump will provide second stage heating and first stage cooling. In this case, the GO relay is being configured for O to operate the reversing valve. So in this case, the 553 is not controlling the fan. We are assuming the air handling unit is operating the fan whenever the Y or the ACC relay turn on. So that brings up the ACC relay. What is that being configured for? Well, we're actually using the DX coil for dehumidification. So the ACC relay will be configured for dehumidification. Now the duct sensor 083 is providing freeze protection to the DX coil. So whenever we get a dehumidification call, the ACC relay will close, provide a signal to the air handler unit to operate the fan at the dehumidification speed. Now obviously, this type of dehumidification is only possible when we're in cooling mode. We cannot use it when we're in heating mode. Application six 
is another heat pump application where this time we are controlling a radiant floor, heat pump, and backup heat. So our first stage of heat is the radiant floor, operated with the W relay. Our second stage of heat is coming from the heat pump, so Y is being configured for heat pump. Our GO relay must be set to O in this case, or B, to operate the reversing valve. And our accessory relay is being used to operate an electric strip for backup heat. So instead of operating the coil for dehumidification, now we're using that accessory relay to operate the backup electric strip heating. So in this case, this is the only application of the 553 where we have three possible stages of heat. The only one where we have three stages of heat. So if you're looking for three stages of heat, you have to have this application. A radiant floor, a heat pump, electric strip backup. Our last application for the 553 shows a radiant floor, a heat pump, and a fan. So first stage heat is the radiant floor controlled with the W relay. Second stage heat is our heat pump with the Y relay set to heat pump. This is also our stage of cooling when we're in cooling mode. GO relay is set to O for the reversing valve. And this time our accessory relay is controlling a fan. So those last three applications, we're just changing what the accessory relay is operating. The first case showed it operating a dehumidifier. Second case showed it operating the backup electric strip. And this last application shows that accessory relay operating the fan. So the fan can operate with heating and cooling or independently for ventilation. Now that we've looked at the applications for the 553, let's look at the features that are particular to the 553 thermostat. So we're going to take a look at the heat terminal selection and the air group master or member setting. A nice thing about the 553 is that we have an option to configure our first stage of heat, that W relay, for a number of different heat terminals. So on the 557, we are limited to radiant floor or other. On the 553, we can actually configure that first stage of heat for whatever we have in our application, radiant floor, convector, furnace, or fan coil. Our W2, if we have a second stage of heat, can be configured for convector, furnace, and fan coil. So this greater degree of flexibility will avoid the scenario where we're turning off W because we don't have the heat terminal we're looking for and we're using the W2 terminal instead. We don't have to do that with the 553. We can configure W for exactly what we have, W2 for what we have as well. The 553 can be an air group master or an air group member. Now the 557 could only be a master. The 552 can only be a member. So the 553 is very flexible in that it can be the master or a member. Now if the 553 is controlling heat equipment only, obviously it can just be an air group member. So when it is controlling cooling equipment, it can be a master. In heat-only applications, it is a member. So this allows for a lot of flexibility, like the image we've shown on the screen, where maybe a user wants all of the same thermostat in their space. We can use the 553 as the master to control the cooling equipment, and we can also use the 553 as the member for the radiant floor. So it makes it simple, allows us to use the same thermostat throughout a space if the application fits. Now the nice thing about the Air Group Master when it comes to the 553 and the 557 is that it will apply the radiant floor warm weather shutdown to all of the Air Group Member thermostats. So you can have some performance series thermostats and the Air Group Master, as long as you're using a 553 or a 557, will apply that really nice radiant floor warm weather shutdown setting to all of the member thermostats. We're going to 
quickly take a look at the wiring to the 553 just to highlight how simple it is to install. So we'll look at the TN2, TN4 standalone wiring, we'll look at the auxiliary sensor connections, and the heat pump connection. Very simple to do the Tech Marnet connections. We have the two wire for the TN2 connections, TN2 to TN2. Remember these are not polarity sensitive to make it even easier. And we have the four wire for the TN4 connection. So TN4 to TN4, C to C. We have our R going to R on the thermostat, a jumper installed to RH, and then we'll bring the W back to the W at the TN4 connection. Of course, it can also be used in a standalone operation, and the image on the right is showing the standalone wiring where we have R and C coming from the transformer. We're going to add a jumper from R to RH, take a wire from W to our valve, and then take the other wire from the valve to the C at the transformer. Very simple wiring. These are our auxiliary sensor connections. So we, there are two auxiliary sensor input terminals. S1 can be configured for a room sensor, floor sensor, coil sensor, or duct sensor if you're doing that coil dehumidification like we saw in application 5. Sensor 2 can be configured to be a room sensor, a floor sensor, or an outdoor sensor. So it does allow for a lot of flexibility. Note here, there are no input terminals for the external temperature and humidity sensor 086. So the 553 will not accommodate that external humidity sensor. If you desire to use one, you have to move to the 557. We have three wire connection to the heat pump. The R from the heat pump coming to the thermostat. And then we have Y back to the heat pump. And then we have our O back to the heat pump for the reversing valve. Notice these are not isolated relays, they are tied to the RC. They're tied from that power at the heat pump. In summary, we looked at features that all of the designer series thermostats have in common. They all have that radiant floor heating and cooling compatibility. They all support Tech Barnett communication. They have the convenient touchscreen away key, the dual temperature display, and the nice scheduling and optimum start features. Now the 553 and the 557 have a lot of features in common as well. They both have the built-in relative humidity sensor. They can both be operating for safe radiant floor cooling by providing that relative humidity measurement to the 406. They feature the radiant floor warm weather shutdown, which really sets Tecmar apart from the rest. They have the same heat and cool staging operations, and if they're being used to operate an air source heat pump, then we can configure the balance point or a balance point schedule. We looked at the 553 application. Since this is the newest member to the designer series line, we took a closer look at the applications that the 553 was designed for. Remember, we want you to choose this thermostat based on the applications, not on the feature set. Because of the flexibility options of the relays, it can't control everything at the same time. So choose a thermostat based on the application and you won't go wrong. We looked at features that are unique to the 553, such as the heat terminal selection and the fact that it can be configured to be an air group master or an air group member. And we took a look at the wiring just to see how simple it is to configure the 553 for Tech Barnett communication or standalone operation. We looked at the auxiliary sensor connections and the three wire connection to the heat pump. I hope that you learned a lot about the entire designer series thermostat line and that you take away that the 552, 553, and 557 make up a comprehensive premium thermostat control line. Particularly, I hope you feel confident about choosing one of these thermostats for your particular application. Remember, choose a thermostat based on application suitability and you won't go wrong. 
For more information about these designer series thermostats and to see the thermostat comparisons and application comparisons, you can take a look at our website www.techmarkcontrols.com. If you have any questions, please let us know by signing in an email to learn at techmarkcontrols.com and we'll get back to you within the same day. We at Techmar appreciate your feedback and we welcome any opportunity to include more or different training that will help our customers. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation. My name is Elizabeth Brown. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.